welcome to the Chamber Music Masterclass, part of the Conscious Listening Piano Festival. I'm so excited to introduce a wonderful group from the Chamber Music Center of New York.
You guys sound great. Yeah. Is are you working with Mary Jo? Yes. You know, she was my teacher. She told you that, right? Uh, so listen to everything she says. Do everything she says. Um, <laughs> um, so let's see. You, well, first of all, that was a beautiful performance. I think you guys did really, really wonderfully with this. And it's it's a hard piece, isn't it? It's a lot of there's a lot of um, technical demand, a lot of emotional demand, and I think you did a really, really good job. And you're listening really well. Um, you know, I want to talk a little bit first about the opening um, because it's such an interesting opening. And I noticed one thing that you did really well is that you, you moved with each other, you know? Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about how you could be slightly more effective with the way that you're moving with each other and the way that you affect each other. Um, because, you know, in a string quartet, you don't have a conductor, right? So you're, you're functioning um, wordlessly, right? So you need to be able to communicate. Um, and one thing I didn't notice, I, I felt that you were trying to get in sync with each other, but you weren't trying to change each other. And if we can add that layer, I think you could have a, a little bit more possibility in, in, in the moment, right? So. Just to, to talk about that a little bit, um, I'm put my viola down for a second because I need, well, actually, no, I'll just use my hands. Um, so if you think of a cue system, right, as it could be a dictatorship, right? So if my left hand is the leader and this hand is the follower, go, right? You guys are doing a little bit more of this, right? So you're gathering, but at the end of the day, the follower is actually the leader. Does that make sense? So that, there's an incredible power in that. And I don't feel that, that you guys try to, to, to do enough of that and, and exercise that. So just as a little example, like if I, can you just play the first note? Right, and then I'll, I'll play with you again. So you see I'm messing, I'm messing with your cue, right? I'm trying to alter it, um, and I'm trying to, to change. In that, I was just changing the tempo, but there are all these other variables, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can affect, I can affect the, the quality of your sound, I, you know, it, without, without saying anything. And I didn't feel enough that you each had your own picture, and then you're trying to reconcile that picture, like in, in that like, you know, squishy moment, right, when you're about to play. Does that make sense? So I would just say a couple things. One thing to think about in this opening is, of course, Is est var, right? Like, is it true? This is the song, right? And what was he like, 17 years old? Was he 17? That's pretty cool. He was 17 years old when he wrote this, because this is a really great quartet, right? I mean, it's, it's you, how old are you guys? 17? <laughs> what? Does anyone compose 18? here? Anybody compose anything? Any string quartets? No. <laughs> if we're going to talk about like a prodigy, he was like the biggest prodigy in all of music history, right? Like more than Mozart, just at a younger age, no one was writing what Mendelssohn was writing. I mean, this is pretty incredible stuff. Um, but in that first, in, there are a couple things to think about. First is, is you come in with an eighth note, right? It's anticipating the beat, right? <sighs> Right? It's not solid. It's not on the down, down, uh, downbeat, right? So there's a sense of anticipation of leading, right? Then the, the marking is mezzo forte, isn't it? Yeah. Mezzo forte is like a strange marking. Would you think that this is mezzo forte? Like what would you, I don't know, looking at the note values, you'd probably give it a different dynamic, no? What would you give it? Mezzo piano piano. Right? Mezzo forte is a lean. It's not forte, but it's, there's, a, there's a kind of an intensity to this and a, and a hint of urgency, even though it's adagio, right? But there's a, a sense of, right? You, you have to say something. You, and then you have this messa di voce, 
hairpin on the first bar, which is like really hard for singers to do, right? It's hard to, in one breath, expand and then contract, right? It's a lot of breath control. It's really, really hard to do. And you're going to do something that's really hard because it's the same thing with your bow, right? So as a quartet in unison, you're going to try to achieve this. And then you have this hesitation. <gasps> no, no, no. Piano. Yidom. No, I can't. I can't. And then you stop, right? So can you each sort of gather that mental picture for a moment and think of like, like sort of summon that, a little bit of heat, right? Which you know erupts into the, right? Like there's a, right? So it's, it's contained in here already in that moment, right? So can, can, we, can we just even feel it for a moment? Even just, just get ready to play? You don't even have to play yet. Just get ready to play. Like get your instruments kind of ready. Are, are, is, this, is this your vibe? <laughs> do you feel passive or do you feel like you're looking for, is it true? Is it true? <sighs> Why? And don't go to piano until it's piano maybe, right? Like if that hairpin could be in mezzo forte, right? But, but I, I, I already felt something that was really nice, right? Like there was a, like you had something to say, right? Um, so there's, this is always like, like a tension in, in, in an ensemble, right? Like, because you, you have to get things together. So there's always like, you, you know, an agenda of alignment, right? But at the same time, you need to think about the four of you have been rehearsing this piece, right? And, and you have to make sure that you're also keeping in focus the agenda of like, what are we saying here, right? And I think you, I think you, you have the, the picture in your head, but let's bring it more to the foreground, right? So let's start with that one more time. Wait, wait, wait. I felt like you guys were just saying, yeah. But I missed that urgency, like the three of you saying, like already mind reading. There's this moment, it's kind of like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? that twitchy little moment where if even like right, if right before a performance, right, you, you know that if she starts playing, you've got to be in there already, right? So you, even passively at this moment right now, before you start playing, I have like my eye on your bow. I'm, I'm already like, I'm zeroing in. And if you start moving, I'm, I'm going to be there and I'm going to read your mind. I'm going to get inside your brain. Right? I'm gonna, and I'm going to try and exercise mind control. Right? And say, like, we get yeah, that intensity, that mezzo forte. Right? Are you guys in there? Are you reading brains? And that, that, and that, that piano. The hesitation, right? Two things, I think, because this is actually, if you can get this, then everything like, works really well. Um, sorry, I'm like, yap to yap. Sorry, uh, I'll stop in a second. Um, if you can get that hairpin to really reach, everything possible in the... Right, somehow to reach out into the void, and then the re recession is different than the... Right? So try that one more time. Great. And, and, and the final thing, breathe the rest. Because that's the vacuum, right? Like, because there's a lot of thinking that goes on in that rest, right? Like, did I just say that? Did I? What am I going to do? What am I going to do about that? What's next? Right? So I don't want to like monopolize. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do one thing? 
can you play the, the downbeat of the, sec of the second bar, the piano, and don't move? And then you have a new idea. No, no, downbeat of the second bar, just the piano. No, not piano, but piano. Right, and so, so then it's like, because then, how does that work, right? How does the rest work? It's a question, right? And then the... Um, and it's... Right? It's, it's funny because it's, it, it is an appoggiatura, so you would assume a stress on the downbeat. But the crescendo actually goes through that eighth note, right? And that sends into the rest as well. Okay, let's maybe do a slightly longer run. Yeah, from the beginning. Please step in. Why do you put a rest there? Oh, it says non vibrato in your part. Yes. You guys wrote that? You should do it. It's a good idea. <laughs> you know, because it's so, like, so suddenly blank after the. What's going on? And if you stop it, it's regular. But. These little dots, right? It's so vocal to have this kind of leading anacrusis figure, right? Pom, 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 um, good. One other thing about the opening. If even though it's like, it's everyone's playing in unison, can, I, can you try getting a little bit more of a sense of reaching up and going down. Right, and so immediately we have this like, from one note to spreading out, right? It's, it's a kind of an expansion. So I, it, maybe you could, you could probably like sit slightly closer to the bridge. So you get a tug a little bit more, a kind of like bass tone, maybe a little bit more bow speed, and just see if that kind of skews that difference a little bit more. Yeah. louder is there a way to really like do you have to hook I know it's really hard his bowing is actually really good isn't it try like really exhaling let, let the air out so that you feel like you're your shoulders are really supple. And, and tr try the piano pickup and see if you can just do that in one bow. And just don't, don't feel like you have to move too much. So, so actually, so, so for, for this to work, start a little bit lower in the bow because we're going to try and use the whole bow, right? F 
feels a little cramped, but don't worry about it. No vibrato. Not yet, not yet. A little bit more. Let's try this painting. No sound. Like, just one hair. Can we just do right on this painting? How can you make less sound? Yeah. Suddenly, like the, the bottom drops out of the room, right? And then, go for it. Don't don't cue. Yeah. So this is like, don't don't think too much because there's a lot of information in that bar, but just try to get. Just cue the downbeat because otherwise it's like. I'm sorry, I'm gonna butt in yeah. because we're running out of time and they have another rehearsal. Oh no! So can I just wrap up a couple things? And it's awesome to see you um, convey so many great ideas. What I remember being a student is that when there is a uh, one artistic idea, it's really clear. And then when you go home and you recreate that, there's a lot of other ideas that come up. And so I think part of What's fun about chamber music is that you can each bring in your own ideas to the next rehearsal and extend what Masumi is saying and add your own ideas to it. But for instance, some of the questions, um, have you guys talked about what are the, the, the arches? Where are the phrases? Have you guys talked about where the phrase starts? Yes? OK. Have you guys talked about um, forte versus piano and playing it side by side and trying to figure out how much forte you can create versus the piano. Yeah, OK. So in this room, what I was hearing is that some, sometimes you can actually extend that even more. And I'm hearing great dynamics. Um, but when you're playing with a live audience, the fun part of that is that you find that you can extend everything that you're doing and uh, project it even longer, even more differences in terms of the energy level. Um, because you have all these people to share that energy with. And when you're going to be performing at the gala, it'll be an even bigger space, right? So thinking acoustically about how would that sound and how is that very different than being in a practice room? How did that compare to what you guys were feeling in rehearsal in terms of the sound and how you guys are blending? I, I would say, like, I, I agree. I think it felt a little bit more. There wasn't so much. So that's something that you guys can work out, uh, talking through four distinct artistic visions. And going circling back to what you were saying is the stronger your own visions are, the better for the quartet, because there's four really strong visions coming together that makes it more exciting. So it's, it's fine to have some sort of um, a difference and then bring it um, here together in your rehearsal. And uh, I wish we had more time, but thank you so much for playing. It was really, really wonderful to have you here in person. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic.